After studying this module, you shall be able to know what are the types of anxieties, learn about the various types of anxiety disorders, identify the causes of these disorders, know about the treatment. Anxiety is an uncomfortable and highly unbearable condition wherein the person suffering feels uneasy. Anxiety can be triggered by a particular situation, person, object or thought. This feeling of uneasiness can be experienced by the people of any age, adult or child. For example, a child may feel anxious before writing the exam. Similarly, an adult might feel anxious when he is about to give a presentation. Anxiety, the term can be used in two varying ways as mentioned by Spielberg in 1970. One way may be to describe a person's relatively enduring characteristic and another way anxiety can be used as in specific situations. A person may only experience anxiety when he or she comes across a particular specific situation. This type of anxiety is called state anxiety. While the other type of anxiety which forms a personality trait of a person wherein the trait remains fixed or constant in any and every situation may be happy or disturbing situation this type of anxiety which remains constant throughout is called the trait anxiety. Some disorders show trait whereas some disorders reflect state anxiety. The major adulthood anxiety disorders are generalized anxiety disorder obsessive compulsive disorder, phobias which include specific phobias and social phobias, panic disorder. Now we first discuss generalized anxiety disorder. Generalized anxiety disorder or GAD as the name suggests is the most basic and general form of anxiety. The main focus of this disorder is upon the concept of worry. It presents the highest degree of the trait anxiety as mentioned above. This means that the person suffering from GAD is suffering from a very high degree of anxiety which is not specifically related to any situation or object or person. The person worries throughout the day without any threatening stimulus being present. This type of anxiety is also known as the free floating anxiety. DSM-4 provides a criteria which helps in diagnosing GAD. The criteria states that the patient must report extreme worry over several of the activities. The patient must also report that this worry has been present for not less than 6 months and for the most days in these 6 months. There is also a list of symptoms that has been listed by DSM-4 out of which the patient must report at least 3 symptoms. Controlling the worry is difficult. The worry and anxiety is related to 3 or more of the followings. Feeling of being on the edge and restlessness, getting tired very fast low concentration level or blank mind, mood mostly being irritated, disturbed sleep, muscle tension, distress and impairment being caused in daily life due to the worry and anxiety. Epidemiology of generalized anxiety disorder is as follows. Generalized anxiety disorder if compared with other anxiety disorder is more commonly found in women than in men. Studies have been conducted and it has been found that the onset of this disorder is generally in early 20s or the mid-teens. The patients suffering from generalized anxiety disorder describe the onset of this disorder as gradual and insidious. Finally, studies show that the prevalence of GAD is 3% in a time span of 12 months and a prevalence of 5% in the whole lifetime. The etiology of generalized anxiety disorder provides explanation with the help of various perspectives. Wherein psychoanalytical perspective states, according to Freud, there are two main reasons for a person to be diagnosed with this disorder. One cause was overprotective parents and the other was excessive punishment. If a child is punished for the smallest mistakes and is forced to suppress his id impulses, he will develop a feeling of fear and anxiety. The anxiety keeps building up until the child has grown into an adult and this anxiety comes out as a free floating or trait anxiety. Also, when the child has overprotective parents who protect the child from the smallest threat, he is unable to develop any defense mechanism. Thus, after growing up, when he faces the smallest threat of fear, it leads to a very high level of anxiety. Cognitive behavioral perspective states, 
that people with anxiety disorders have a tendency to focus their attention more towards the negative or threatful information rather than positive information. This leads to a feeling of fear and anxiety throughout the day. Humanistic perspective suggests that people suffer from GAD because they are unable to accept themselves for who they are. This happens due to extremely strict parenting which leads to criticism and punishment. As a result, the child grows up to think that he is worth nothing and with low self-confidence and low self-esteem which causes anxiety in the person when he faces even a slightly threatful situation. Sociocultural perspective believes that the socioeconomic status of an individual may affect him or her on a mental level. It has been seen that people belonging to the ethnic minority groups or the lower socioeconomic groups are the ones under extreme pressure of the society. Thus, these individuals experience high level of GAT. Child sexual abuse in women also has led to high level of GAT. Genetic factors. The possibility of genetically acquiring GAD is only 0.32 coefficients. Also, studies have shown that there is very low concordance rate between the twin pairs and no difference in concordance rate was found between dizygotic and monozygotic twins. Biological factors. Overactivation of the system of the brain which involves the papist circuit and septohippocampal system are responsible for high levels of anxiety. This system is also called the behavioral inhibition system or BIS as mentioned by Gray in 1983. GABA receptors also play an important role. These receptors are responsible for controlling the activity taking place within the hypothalamus and sympathetic nervous system. Now we must talk about the treatment of generalized anxiety disorder wherein we first talk about cognitive behavioral treatment. So CBT treatment for the GAD involves applying various techniques by which he may prevent the response to such feared stimuli. There are three main key techniques which have been found to be effective in the treatment of GAD. These techniques are relaxation training, worry exposure assignments and cognitive restructuring of anxiety provoking thoughts. The psychoanalytical therapy includes the aim to explore the subject's problems by understanding the patient's relationship with the people around him. Development throughout their childhood and by also noting the use of resistance and transference during the sessions. Pharmacological therapy. Benzodiazepine is one medicine that has been used for the cases of GAT and has been found effective to some extent, but it has several limitations if used for a long time. The next anxiety disorder of adulthood we have is obsessive compulsive disorder. This OCD is considered to be one of the most severe and chronic of the anxiety disorders as stated by American Psychiatric Association. This disorder consists of obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are repeatedly occurring intrusive thoughts or visual images with an urge that is difficult to control. Obsessions are of different types including feeling of contamination, fear of acquiring a disease in case of contact with others, tidiness or orderliness, bodily concerns, etc. Obsessions arise because the patient is unable to realize the fact that the suppressed thoughts and the images are increasing the strength of these obsessions. Compulsions on the other hand are the repetitive behaviors, be it covert or overt, which are purposefully done to reduce or completely get rid of the anxiety which arises due to the repeatedly occurring thoughts or images known as obsessions. Compulsions are performed in a ritualistic manner with a particular procedure and number of times that they must be repeated. The most commonly seen and reported compulsion includes washing. Epidemiology of OCD is as follows. OCD is slightly more commonly found in women than in men. The onset of OCD is found to lie between the late adolescence and early adulthood. Another important point is that this disorder is that the age of onset is earlier in men than in women. The course of OCD is chronic. Now we discuss the etiology of OCD. Etiology provides an explanation with the help of various perspectives. Psychoanalytical factors, wherein the founder of psychoanalysis Freud said that obsessive thoughts are a result of suppressed id impulses and the compulsions arise as a result of the ego defenses. 
Freud also believed that obsessions might arise due to the child being fixated on the anal stage. When the parents apply strict and rigid rules over the child's toilet training, the child tends to develop a rigid and obsessive personality while growing up. Behavioral factors Behaviorists believe that OCD, just like GAD, can result from the fear of a stimulus which is acquired by classical conditioning and the fear is maintained by operant conditioning. Cognitive factors Cognitive psychologists believe that the obsessive thoughts are intrusive and the person fears that he might hurt someone, thus the anxiety builds up. To reduce this anxiety, compulsions arise in the form of the overt or covert behaviors. Genetic factors Genetic studies have been providing mixed responses, that is, some researchers say that people suffering from OCD might have some genetic evidence, but some might not. Biological factors. Biologists have found out two causes that may result on OCD. The first brain system is the loop connecting the orbitofrontal area to the thalamic region. And the second brain system is the loop that connects the orbitofrontal region to the thalamic region. But via Corpus triatus. Behavioral intervention. Now we have to come to the treatment of OCD, under which we discuss behavioral interventions, wherein just like phobias, the patients are exposed to the feared stimulus and then they are helped how to prevent the reaction of the feared stimulus. This procedure helps the patient to see that there is no association between the stimulus and the patient's reaction. Relaxation is also used in order to help reduce anxiety and avoid compulsions from happening. Cognitive Behavioral Treatment Mind experiments, behavioral hypothesis testing, challenging inappropriate thoughts, thought stopping are included as part of this technique. These are some of the techniques that are used for the treatment using cognitive behavioral intervention. Pharmacological Intervention Clomipramine and SSRIs are the effective drugs that help in the treatment of OCD but have several side effects also. Surgical approaches. Surgery in people with OCD is only done when it is at the severe level and the person has not been responding to the treatment of any sort. It is not very clear how exactly surgery affects OCD patients but it has been hypothesized that it severs the connections between the orbitofrontal and thalamic areas which dampens down the activity within the circuit and hence the obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms. Next anxiety disorder we have is phobias. Phobias are fears that are irrational and persistent of certain objects, situations or animals. Phobias can be of two types, specific phobias and social phobias. Specific phobias are the phobias that are irrational and persistent fears of specific or particular objects and animals. DSM-4 presents a number of features of the specific phobias. Fear in specific phobias is directed or indicated towards a specific object. When the person comes across these specific objects or situations, they experience intense fear and anxiety followed by avoidance of that object. The fear and anxiety rise to such a level that they interfere with the patient's daily functioning. DSM-4 tries to categorize between four types of commonly seen specific phobias. Animal type, which include the fear of lizards, snakes, spiders, etc. Then we have natural environmental type, which includes the fear of dark places and heights or any natural kind of setup. Blood injection injury type, which includes the fear of blood or injections. And situational type which includes certain situations like elevators or closed places. Epidemiology of specific phobias is as follows. Phobias are one of the most commonly found mental disorders. It was found that situational type phobias are more commonly seen than animal type or blood injection injury phobias. Specific phobias are more commonly diagnosed and acquired in women than in men. Usually phobias start to set in at childhood. Etiology. Behavioral factors. According to behaviorists, a person acquires a specific phobia when he has experienced a traumatic accident or incident. There are three basic principles of behaviorism which can explain the fear of a person of specific objects. These three principles are operant conditioning, vicarious conditioning and respondent conditioning principle. While evolutionary perspective states 
that ever since we have been evolving, we have learned from our ancestors that some objects or animals are to be feared of and to be stayed away from, for example, spiders or snakes. Then we have biological perspective, which believes that there is a great possibility of heredity of specific phobias. Genetic bases also play an important role in here. Researchers have proved that there is a greater concordance rate within monozygotic twins than in dizygotic twins. A dietitian stress viewpoint states that the specific phobias are acquired due to the high exposure to psychosocial factors such as direct or indirect conditioning and biologically influenced propensity to experience fear and anxiety. Social phobias or social anxiety disorder. We all experience some sort of social fears in our day-to-day -day lives such as meeting new people or presenting in front of our superiors etc. But people who suffer from social phobias are on a completely extreme side. People with social phobias have persistent and extreme fear of multiple types of situations. Social phobia was never considered to be a psychological problem for many years. But in 1994, an alternate term social anxiety disorder was given to this problem which was given by DSM-4. Clinically, a person suffering from a social phobia is one who experiences fear and anxiety in going to new places, meeting new people and being in new situations altogether. The person feels that he might do some inappropriate behavior and he might embarrass or humiliate the other people around him and sometimes himself. Therefore, the patient avoids going to social gatherings or to new places and meeting new people. When a person suffering from social phobias is exposed to situations he fears, he experiences some physical symptoms such as blushing, fastening of heartbeat, drying of mouth, sweating, etc. Epidemiology of social phobia is as follows. Social phobias are commonly seen to begin in the late adolescence, that is from the age of 13 to 20 years. Its course is found to be chronic and unremitting. Most studies show that social phobias are more commonly diagnosed in women, but some studies say that there is an equal distribution across both genders. Now we come to etiology. Biological factors. Family studies show that there are higher possibilities of acquiring social phobias if a relative already has it. This prevalence rate is highest for social phobias. Behavioral factors. Conditioning plays a vital role in the development of this disorder. Public speaking and blushing in public strengthens the effect. Socially phobic individuals differ from the other healthy people because when excursions are done in order to reduce fear and talk in front of people, healthy people take it in a positive manner. Wherein, for socially phobic people, it goes into complete negative and opposite direction. Cognitive factors. People with social phobia have certain negative beliefs such as whenever I talk I sound stupid or I hope I don't stare too much at anybody. These people always feel and believe that they will say something wrong. This leads them to feel anxious and fearful. Also, socially phobic people tend to selectively pay attention to threatful or negative situations. Treatment. Behavioral treatment includes systematic desensitization which is the first very commonly used technique. In this technique, the person is exposed to the stimulus he fears in a systematic or hierarchical manner and is then taught to reduce the anxiety. On the other hand, flooding is another technique which uses the same procedure but the exposure of the feared stimuli in this technique is sudden and at once. Pharmacological treatment wherein we have certain medications available to treat this disorder. Now we come to panic disorder. Panic attacks have been a topic of research and concern for many years. According to DSM-3, panic disorder was defined as a part of anxiety disorder but differed from the other anxiety disorders in only one way that is presence of panic attacks. Panic attacks are referred to as sudden attacks or episodes of anxiety in full force accompanied by fear of losing one's own mind, going crazy or dying. The person suffering from the panic attack experiences physical symptoms including palpitation, high blood pressure, choking, shortness of breath, sweating, dizziness and sometimes nausea. 
The panic attacks are experienced at different levels by different people that is some people might experience five of the physical symptoms mentioned above whereas some might experience only two symptoms but both may be experiencing panic attack. Many years later DSM-4 categorized three different types of panic attacks. Situationally bound attacks which includes panic attacks which take place in the presence of a particular object or situation. Other ones are situationally predisposed attacks which include attacks which take place only in the presence of some situations not all and unexpected or spontaneous attacks. Attacks in these cases occur at any point randomly or out of the blue. Another characteristic of panic attacks is that they occur or take place in all anxiety disorders and are not only bound to occur in panic disorder. Epidemiology of panic attacks is as follows. Panic disorder attacks are a prevalent and chronic condition. The lifetime prevalence is estimated to be 1 to 4 percent according to AP in 2000. Researchers have found that women have twice the chance to acquire this disorder than men. A median of 24 years has been found to be the approximate age for this disorder to be acquired. Now we discuss the etiology or causal factors of panic disorder, biological factors. Researchers say that there is a genetic component in acquiring this disorder. Patients who suffer from this disorder have higher chances of experiencing a panic attack on inhaling carbon dioxide than patients who have other anxiety disorders. Behavioral factors. Behaviorists believe that like all other anxiety disorders, even panic attack can be a result of classical conditioning and an association of unconditional and conditional stimuli. Cognitive factors. Some cognitive factors that contribute to panic attacks are predictability, controllability and expectancies. Now we have certain treatment modalities available for panic disorder which are cognitive behavioral interventions. The three steps taken from Clark's model are used for the treatment of panic attacks that is relaxation, cognitive procedure which may include instructing oneself to relax in threatful situations and behavioral procedure which include making a person to realize that if the person does not react, the situation will pass and not harm him or not occur also. Pharmacological treatment, panic disorders have been treated effectively with the help of benzodiazepine and SRIs. Combination interventions, researchers have also found that combining short term dosages of benzodiazepine and long term sessions of CBT have been very effective in improving the conditions of the patient suffering from panic disorders. Summary, anxiety as we all know is a feeling of distress and uneasiness experienced when one comes across a threatful situation or a feared stimuli. Anxiety can be of two types, trait anxiety and state anxiety. There are several anxiety disorders which are general anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, specific phobias, social phobias, panic disorders. GAD is an anxiety disorder where the person experiences free floating anxiety without any specific stimulus. The person keeps worrying all the time. Phobias are of two types, specific and social phobias. They differ based on the type of stimuli the person fears. OCD is another commonly found disorder. This involves obsessions which elicit anxiety and to avoid the anxiety of feelings of fear and guilt sometimes the compulsions are performed which may be overt or covert. Panic disorder or attacks is another anxiety disorder wherein the person panics either on seeing or remembering something or sometimes just out of the blue. The disorders mentioned above have several causes and the treatment for each disorder have also been mentioned above. The commonly used treatments are pharmacological treatment, CBT, behavioral therapy, psychoanalytical therapy, etc.